All right, guys and girls, we are back. Thanks for sticking around on the Always Moto podcast. And we are jumping into the emergency department to talk about all the injuries that are happening in the moto scene at the moment as we head into this weekend's race at Thunder Valley. Let's jump into the emergency department. The emergency department. All the injuries, all the gory details, and when they'll be back on track. It's the list you really don't want to be on. You don't want to be on this list ever, ever, ever. But unfortunately, all these guys seem to end up on it at some point. And it just seems to be that this list is awfully crowded at the moment uh, and getting, you know, unfortunately worse. It's not improving at this stage. We were meant to be starting to get some guys coming back. It doesn't look like that's going to happen at this stage. Uh, but we've added a couple more guys to the list after, after Hangtown. So let's run through this list. Things to note at the start of this show. Uh, we're going to start off with Scott Meshi, that privateer 411. We checked in with him. He managed to sprain an ankle uh, in Moto 1, but still managed to ride Moto 2 at Hangtown, which is good, but he is a bit sore. He probably has a bit of swelling in that ankle, uh, and he might be benefiting from some recovery this week. Now, how would you recover from a swollen ankle? You've got to manage that swelling down, whether you're doing lots of icing, submersion, Maybe you're using something like the endurance recovery boots that we've advertised here on the show for a little while now. Those uh, air pressure boots where they uh, got compartments that you know compress the areas along the leg, help move that swelling back centrally to the body to have it reabsorbed and removed. Um, they would do a quite nice job there, that endurance recovery boot. So maybe they should. Maybe Scott. We maybe should put Scott in touch with him. They can. He can use the uh, always moto in lowercase at checkout and save on those endurance recovery boots. Maybe maybe he's already got some other methods, but. Uh, that's what he would need to be doing to get that swelling down. Brandon Ray on his Instagram this week pointed out he was running really nicely at Hangtown Moto 1, but then had a bit of a drop off and not so well in Moto 2. He's dealing with a bit of a shoulder injury. Now we've reached out to Brandon, but we haven't got a detailed response as yet. Um, so we can't bring you too much about that, but I'd probably be avoiding him from a fantasy, per view, uh, fantasy purposes at this stage. Uh, so the Always Motor Fantasy League there on Pulp MX, I probably wouldn't be picking him. Uh, it just doesn't sound like things are going really well for Brandon Ray. Chase Sexton. This is the interesting one. Obviously, everyone heard about Chase coming into late into um, Hangtown that he was not going to be there. The crash that he had at Parlour was brought up. The fact that he had another crash on the Tuesday during the week in a practice crash, I believe also at Parlour. And then also finding out that he wasn't feeling all that flash and he's been diagnosed with mono kind of just confuses the, the, the situation, right? Like, one, let's look at that crash at Parler in qualifying. If you watch how he gets up, and yes, he does contact his head on the ground as he, as he crashes. You watch how he gets up. He is dazed. And you can't tell me otherwise that he wasn't. He's slow. He's a bit not coordinated on his feet. He gets the bike up and then he keeps going. All that sits to me that if we had a better concussion protocol and an independent body watching these things on some replays, they can show that on the TV. Why can't they get that to a guy in a truck as a medical review point? Maybe Chase doesn't even race pile of one because of that. Maybe he's on protocol earlier. But then to have another crash on Tuesday, two days later, and then get a concussion, was that a fact of the concussion that potentially a low-grade concussion that happened at the race day in qualifying the two days earlier? We'll never know because we don't get that information. We don't also get that scrutiny of our concussion protocol in moto at this stage. It just points out to me that all of this is a problem with our concussion protocol that we talk about all the time here on the Always Moto podcast. It comes up too often. We've had way too many concussions in the last year to two that are just a bit questionable for me and how they've come back and how quickly they've come back a.k.a. Dylan Ferrandis this year with the Daytona crash that we spoke about on last episode of the Always Moto podcast. There just needs to be a bit of a review into this concussion protocol for me. That's what I would like to see happen, and we'll find out a bit more about it. I'm going to try and track down the uh, Al Alpine Star medical guys when I get to Redbud uh, this year as I'm heading over there in person. So we might find out some more later then. Robbie Wageman is on the injured list. He also crashed before Hangtown. Managed to separate his shoulder. Now, for anyone who doesn't understand what a separated shoulder is, that's where the collarbone meets the shoulder blade and you end up with the collarbone sticking up at the end. There's a ligament that holds that down. But unfortunately, when you impact that, it sort of pushes the collarbone up, stretches the ligament or tears that ligament. Now, depending on how bad that is, depends on how long it takes to get back. Minor strain, one or two weeks. Bit more of a strain, so grade two. 
three to four. Complete tear is usually a six week repair. It's not usually something that requires surgery, but it is something that requires time and a bit of rehab. So he'll be out probably for a few weeks. Um, depending on the severity, you know, I would expect him back around that red bud because that's a week after the break. So we've got four races in a stretch, then a week off. So that's going to be where I see people starting to come back into the series if they've got an issue at this point in time, kind of like Robbie Wagering. We checked in with Max Sanford as well. He was in that first turn pileup that everybody saw in that Moto2 450 race. He's okay. He's got a bit of whiplash, so it's sore neck. Uh, but he claims that his yoga and his flexibility work that he does pretty regularly has saved him with that crash. And look, that's probably a fair uh, assessment on his part. But also too, it's just something that you know you can sort of get out of if you're fit and healthy. These things don't affect you as badly when you do crash if you are in that fit, healthy, flexible position. So that general general health and well-being just assists those things in everyday life. All right, let's move down the list a bit further here. Out, out following injuries at Hangtown. Obviously, we've got Jeremy Martin, the number six on that Club MX Yamaha. Anyone who hasn't seen his crash uh, in that first or second turn there, the right-hander at Hangtown on the opening lap, where he pops his arm out. You can see it break, and then unfortunately he gets run over as well on that arm, which would not have helped anything. He's going to be out for some time. He's already had surgery. We don't know the exact details. It's, it's talked about a dislocated head, wrist, elbow, fractures as well. So there's a combination of all that floating around in there. Uh, it's not going to be pretty for a couple of, couple of months for, for J-Mark. This might be the end of his season in terms of motocross. Maybe, he, he's, maybe he's got enough points to qualify for Sumo motocross and he can get back in time for that. We'll have to wait and see how it all goes. And once we know more details on what was actually injured, in the crash as well would determine obviously how long we pre predict him to be out, but shitty situation for J-Mart. Wanted to make it through Supercross and he did that finally. And then he goes out second round at motocross after having a shocker at the first round. It wasn't wasn't how it was meant to be for J-Mart. Michael Moseman, basically that same straight crashed as well. Uh, he was right in front of J-Mart as, as J-Mart went down, but then managed to crash himself not very far after that. Now, Conflicting information. We don't have any confirmation at this stage from the team or from Michael. And I've spoken about this before. TLD and Michael Mosman are very terrible at getting out this information until right before the next race, if at all. We suspect there's a concussion there, which would then go with his history from previous things with his neck injury as well this season, last season. So this is going to be probably a couple of weeks for Michael before he is back in action. Again, he might be one of those ones that's at that red bud point because there's been a week off. And that's about three weeks away. So I have to wait and see how it goes for Michael and if we get some more information. Now, just a funny little point here. I was checking, I, as I always do after these races, I check through all the results to see who's a DNF and a DNS and all those sorts of things to see if there's, if there's any irregularities and why they might have done that. So I reach out to them. And I noted that uh, Michael Moseman and, and Jeremy Martin were both DNSs on the AMA results sheets for Moto2, which is quite funny because they both clearly started the race. But uh, it's, an, it's one of those never change AMA situations that we, uh, we hear about from other media sources. And we're starting to tag onto the back of that as well because we're starting to see this more and more as we look into the results and the injuries as, as things come along. All right, making your return this week. I've only really got one, and it's not really a massive return, but Chris Kiefer's set to come back for, um, for Thunder Valley this week. He obviously had that rib injury at Parla when he was trying to qualify for the national, but he raced Loretta's last week at the Parla um, area qualifier, so he's all good at this stage. There was, again, with him, with some conflicting information about what he actually did, cracked, broken, fracture. They all mean the same thing when we're talking bones. Um, don't don't mess it up, uh, but there's potential that he just might have um, sprained the joint between the rib and the ver and, and the vertebrae, or maybe he did some rib cartilage. Again, you can't rely on a moto guy to give you accurate information, unless it's me, I'm a physio, different story. But he's back racing this weekend. That's the main part of the story you need to know. All right, some updates from the recovery path. Justin Barsha was meant to be starting to come back on the bike, but it sounds to, that he's had some setbacks. Not sure what that means at this stage, but it doesn't sound fantastic. Maybe maybe he's had a little tip over. Maybe he's just had some pain. We're not sure, but he's not coming back just yet, so we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Justin Rodbell still having issues. We talked to him on the show a couple of months back, mid-Supercross season, about his Achilles tear in November. We, we reached out to him when he didn't show up at Parlour and he said he's still having issues with his Achilles, which means 
Maybe he rushed that recovery a little bit. Maybe it wasn't quite as strong as he thought. I don't know the exact details. We're waiting on a little bit more information back from Justin, but um, at this stage, we don't know when he's going to return, but I dare say he's going to, at worst, want to be back for his home race at Bud's Creek. But you just don't know with Achilles. If he hasn't quite got the... the uh, if he hasn't quite got the recovery going well enough, he might not be able to be back at all. We'll have to wait and see. But that kind of then gives us a bit of a, an insight into the recovery time frame for Eli Tomac that he's going to be going through. He also tore his Achilles tendon in May in that second last Supercross round. Now, with Justin Rodbell, his recovery, his injury happened in late November. So he is now six or so months post-injury and still not racing. That then puts Eli's timeline, if he had it in he had it in May, that's going to put him back at about October to start coming back at best. But that six to nine months that our usual recovery time frame that I mentioned for an Achilles puts him in the window of about October to January. So that really puts him up in the air as to making it back in time for Supercross in 2024, which I already stated in previous episodes when I was talking about Eli's injury. How that looks in the in the long run, we don't know. There's been no more updates from Eli at this stage. Things are just obviously in that early, early recovery time frame. He's probably only maybe just even got the stitches out and been able to. Um, he's still in a. He'd be still in a boot at this point. There, there's a, a a very long period of un, unloading of that thing. You can't put any load through the Achilles whilst he's recovering because it takes so much weight through it. It can tear real easy. It's real flimsy at this at this point in time. It's not very strong. So. He'll be working on the rehab side of things. Justin Rodbill obviously was working on it, maybe still working on it. But these are the things that they, these recovery exercises, particularly for that ankle, this is where that slant board that we talk about on Always Moto would come in all the time, uh, really handy. The ability to work on an angled platform and do your calf raises and do your lunges in an angled position changes the load, allows eccentric control to come into effect. Uh, and just makes the exercises be done in a different manner that then prevents you from further issues down the track because you're strengthening in a longer range of motion than you would be without it. So that slant board from slant board guys, really effective piece of equipment. It's very simple. It's very cheap. It's easy to use. You can customize it. You can get ones with hooks on it for putting bands on as well. You need to check out slant board guys, girls, guys and girls out there. It's a very useful piece of equipment and that always moto in lowercase at checkout saves you and also gets us a cut because we've got affiliate deal in place. And maybe we should put Eli and Justin in touch with these guys to get one for them. But uh, it is, would be very useful for an Achilles recovery, that's for sure. So check it out. They're, those guys, they're linked in our show notes as well. All right, that is our emergency department updates at this stage. They obviously keep an eye on our social media pages to see any new inf information that comes out that we find out about before race day on Saturday at Thunder Valley. But let's flip over. We're going to do a Dave's tri diatribe in this episode as well. And it's to do with injuries as well. Check it out. Ready? This is Dave's diatribe. What's a diatribe? A diatribe is a forceful and bitter attack against someone or something. So keep your head down. You might be next. You could be next. You never know who's going to be next. And look, to this week's Dave's Diatribe, it's a little bit close to my heart. It's about injuries and about reporting them. And probably the reason why I'm here in front of you reporting on them right now is the fact that when I was looking at these injury reports a few years ago from different media sources, I couldn't make heads or tails of what they were talking about for the injury, let alone the fact that I thought that they were looking at the wrong thing. Maybe they weren't watching the same thing I was watching. But the one that gets me jacked up all the time is when you hear on one coverage over here that the injury is a head injury and then you hear on the other coverage over here that it's a shoulder injury guys what the f are we looking at honestly we've watched the same crash the guy gets up and walks away how do we end up with two different things you've spoken to the teams you've spoken to the riders how do you get two different things i watch it i get one thing that's how it works you, if you understand the process of the injury and how things occur, and the, what the symptoms and signs to look for as they get up and walk off to, sit, to adjust what's been impacted, you can work it out. If you don't know what you're talking about, don't talk about it, all right? It's as simple as that. If you need help with your injury information, give me a call. I know what I'm talking about. I do this stuff for a living. If you guys write stories about motor riders, which I do as well, but I'm a bit of a hobbyist at that, so I don't claim to cover that side of things. I cover the injuries in the sport. Hence, this is called the emergency department. 
on the, I thought we do for Always Moto. But this is a Dave's diatribe, and I don't like the fact that you guys can't get it right. So give me a call. I would love to help you out. Maybe there's no judgment if you give me a call. I'll just give you the answers. I'm happy to help. Maybe I can be your go-to injury guy. That would be a novel idea, eh? Give me, give me a shot. Give me a go on those things. We can help you out a lot more than you, than you realize, and you won't sound like such a twit to anybody who has any medical information in the background to actually that they understand because you sound pretty silly when you talk about these things if you listen to a couple of different media outlets. So give us a call, guys. Stop, stop guessing when it comes to injuries. Stay in your lane. I'll stay in mine. I'll help you out if you need it. All right, that's Dave's diatribe. Let's take a quick break here on the Always Moto podcast. That's it for the YouTube video. Um, check it out on YouTube. Subscribe, like, follow, all that, whatever it is you do over there on YouTube. Um, but make sure you're following us so that you can keep up to date. All right, we'll take a quick break. 